Now there is a bit of a problem or a complication here. We've said that uh, a given measurement like the microwave background or the acoustic oscillations of the galaxies today or supernovae tell you a particular cosmological parameter, but it's not quite that simple, is it? No, there are uncertainties, and the uncertainties are actually pretty big in any of the given experiments. So let's take the most recent measurements of the cosmological constant and the total matter density of the universe uh, from supernovae, which are shown here in this, uh, is that blue or purple? I'm colorblind. It's blue. It's blue. It's, a, it's hazardous being an astronomer and being colorblind. So what this is saying is this inner line here is saying that we're two-thirds, or actually 68.3% sure that the real answer lies in here. And for the cosmic microwave background, it turns out we're 68% in this little narrow bit. It's very small this way, but it's very long this way. So we really are not actually sure what's going on, except for from here to here. Yeah, so this graph, to make it clear, this is telling you the amount of omega matter, and yeah. matter of the universe, this is telling you the amount of dark energy. And what this is saying is that if you just had the microwave background measurements, it could be here, which would be 70% matter and what 20% um, dark energy, or it could be up here, so 80% and 20%. Basically, what this is telling us, they measured the universe is geometrically flat, so it's telling you the sum of these must add up to 1, but it's not right. telling you actually which combination. Any combination that adds up pretty close to 1, somewhere along here is acceptable. But it is absolutely ruling out this. It couldn't be there or it couldn't be there. It's got to be somewhere on this narrow stripe. Right, so you have what we say, uh, we would say covariance, if you want, of the parameters, or it means you, you've, you've measured something, but you haven't measured quite what you want, which is what's omega matter, or what's omega lambda. You measure the combination together. And this is often called degeneracy, in yes. the sense that uh, you, what you know is some combination of two things, not one by itself. Uh, right. So we know if we knew the value of one, we could calculate the other, but we don't know which combination along this line is sitting there. But conveniently, the supernovae are degenerate this direction. That is, we measure a combination of omega lambda and omega matter in this direction. And the cosmic microwave background is at almost at 90 degrees. Not quite, but close. So that means that if we take this and this, we get a really accurate number together which is going to be sort of in here to, together. On top of that, we also have the baryon acoustic oscillation measurements, which turn out to be something sort of in this direction. And when we add those together, we get this tiny little area where everything's consistent together. And so we're able to zero in to a very precise value of omega matter and omega lambda, it turns out. And no one of the surveys by itself would be able to do that. It's only been the combination of them that you can get this very precise it, it, That's true. And uh, so that makes it very useful. I should note, though, that if you want to get rid of the cosmological constant, you really can do it with any one of these experiments. Or sorry, if you, if you, you can't, none of these experiments allow the cosmological constant not to exist. All of them require it at this point. And we're lucky that they all overlap. So we've got this one and this one that overlap over here. And then we've got this other thing that's not shown from the Bangor acoustic oscillations. And it luckily goes up there. If it had gone up over here, there would have been no place where all three of these things matched. And then we would know we would have a problem. And that would have been exciting, although it would mean we wouldn't understand what's going on very well. Here's another example of one of these plots. Now we're plotting W, which, remember, is the equation of state, state parameter. It's telling you whether the dark energy becomes bigger or lower density as time as the universe expands against omega matter. And here you've got the microwave background measurements. Here you've got the supernova measurements. And they cross again. And again, we also have that baryon acoustic oscillation measurements, which cross through here as well. So once again, when we add it all together, you get this nice little gray area where we put all the information together. And it's quite interesting to see where it lands. Mega matter of about 0.3, and the equation of state parameter of minus 1. That's what Einstein said. What Einstein said. So it looks like whatever is going on, that same story of 30% of the universe being omega matter, and 70% is this stuff that has an equation of state almost exactly what Einstein said, which is stuff that does not change over time. So if we're rolling down the Mexican hat, we're very close to the top, uh, and that would be an unfortunate place to be because it's kind of hard to tell that we're there uh, in any sensible way. Mm -hmm. 
So we can put all these things together and, for example, take stock of our universe. This is what our universe is made of. And we know from this combination of things that it's about uh, just over 30% matter and just under 70% dark energy. Dark energy with an equation of state parameter consistent with minus 1. And we also know from the primordial nuclear synthesis, the deuterium to hydrogen ratio, that it's about 4.9% ordinary matter and the rest must be something that's not made of baryons, so some weirdo subatomic particle. Yes, and so uh, it's a funny universe, but geez, we have a lot of precision here. And I, I, I should say that I think maybe there's still a little bit of uncertainty. This is the best measurement we have right now, but there's still some uncertainty uh, whether or not we might have some little errors creeping in in some of the experiments. And so face value, this is the best answer. And maybe we can talk uh, uh, a little later on about how robust these numbers are. Yep. So, what universe do we live in? We live in a universe that's flat to within 1%, or maybe even a bit better than that now. Yeah, it's better than a half a percent. And pretty much, there's no way around that. All of the measurements, even with the uncertainties, really nail with the cosmic microwave background that that answer seems to be right. And we know the age of the universe, with a precision unmatched since Arch Archbishop Usher said it was 4004 BC. Yeah, in October. 13.798 uh, billion years, plus or minus 0.037. That is incredible precision. Uh, the one thing we're not sure about is whether or not the universe is open, eternal, or infinite, because it's on that knife edge where you can't tell. So that's an interesting place to be. And of course, that is what inflation said we would be close to. But it doesn't actually tell us the real answer. So it doesn't tell you if you're open or closed. It does tell you if you're eternal, because if you've got a cosmological constant in yes. there, it's going to keep on going forever, unless it decays somehow. Unless at some it decays, point. and that Mexican hat allows that to occur in the future. And I should say, I had a bet with my office mate, Sean Carroll. Hello, Sean. Uh, Sean is a well known cosmologist to this day. And when we were graduate students in 1991, I bet him uh, a bottle of very nice port that in 2011, 20 years from the day we made the bet, that we would not be able to measure the geometry of the universe, or omega, to better than 30%. And here we are in 2014. It turns out even in 2011, in the time of our bet, we could do it 30 times better than I was expecting. So I lost the bet, but Sean shared the port with me. Very oh, nice well. of him. One thing there's still a bit of controversy over is the value of Hubble constant, the expansion right now. Here's a variety of different recent measurements. So for example, measurements from the micro different microwave background satellites and from Cepheids and uh, other things like that. And they are jumping around a bit. I mean, the error bars all overlap, but... There is a little bit of a systematic error where these are all measuring how fast the universe is expanding nearby. And these are using the cosmic microwave background to go through and take a model where you take what's happening now and shrink it to a factor of 10 to the 9 more dense in the past where you have these acoustic oscillations bouncing around. And there seems to be a little bit of difference. It's not huge. We like to call this tension, uh, which makes life interesting. It means we have something else to do. I should say, for example, this measurement, though, has already moved a little bit down since the time of this diagram. Uh, so that's resolved it a little bit. And there is some controversy even between the Planck and the WMAP teams we can talk about later on. But it's still amazing. We would not have believed 20 years ago that we could measure anything in cosmology to anything like these precisions. We truly live in an era of precision cosmology.